Welcome back to HPHG with Ms. V. For a quick recap, we discussed what maps are and different types of map projections cartographers make. In this video, we will discuss types of maps in terms of how we use those maps to analyze patterns and processes. So there's different types of maps, of course, because there's different gazillion types of projections Why not have different types of maps, right? But are we going to go through all of those different gazillion types of maps? No. <laughs> We're going to just tap into a few of them, right? So there's two types of maps, okay? This is called a reference map. And a reference map is maps that show um, different features such as roads and mountains and um, other features that are necessary to reference. Uh, transportation, physical features, populated areas, things like that, okay, that you need to reference to. So if you're going on a trip, you would use a reference map because you need to know how to get to certain places, right? Okay. This one, this is called a thematic map. And a thematic map shows, just as it says, themes, right? And it will show themes or relationships uh, according to the spatial areas or spatial landforms on the earth. So in this case, we're talking, you could be talking about population density or rainfall or uh, electoral college or <laughs> the amount of people that are getting ready to vote or the amount of crocodiles in a certain area. It can be all types of thematic um, representations or variables that uh, a geographer would want to analyze, okay? So reference map and thematic maps. In our class, we're going to talk a lot about or use thematic maps because we're looking a lot at patterns and processes of how humans uh, interact with the earth, okay? So let's look at different types of thematic maps. This is called an isolene thematic map. And as you see here, it displays lines um, and connection points to show uh, equal values. So such as elevation and rainfall. In this case, it's showing rainfall, right? Um, and as you can see, the equal amounts or the equal values of certain areas in terms of the variation of rainfall, right, in Australia, okay? Proportional thematic maps uses symbols to display frequency in a variable. In this case, this is 1999 capital population. So this, if you look at the legend, the smaller the dot, the less frequent it is. The larger the dot, the more frequent it is, right? So <clears throat> if you had to look at your maps in the map here, you can see that certain places in California, um, I can see here, like, New Jersey, New York has large dots, right? So that means that the population, the frequency of that population must be humongous, must be a lot, right? Whereas in certain areas, like the Dakotas and so forth, are small, right? All right, dot density maps are maps that have equal sized dots to represent a frequency as well. The more dots, the more of that particular frequency, right? So in this case, as you see here, this says dot, one dot equals 15,000. So we're talking about 15,000 in population, right? So if this is 15,000 people, imagine how many people here that are in Florida in these areas, right? 15,000 people per dot, per dot, <laughs> right? So the more dots that you see in clustered in a certain area are concentrated, which we're going to get to uh, that vocabulary word in a little while. It signifies a certain amount of population in that area, right? So what can we say about this map? Are there more people in the Midwest or are there more people in the Eastern Seaboard? Topographic maps are characterized by large-scale detail showing numerical representation, right? 
So basically here, as you see creeks and you see lakes and you see different numbers, those represent different types of elevation, okay, in terms of hills and valleys and so forth. So those that are in physical geography, if they're looking at the, that information, they would use a map to analyze that type of data, right? Cartograms maps display some mapping variables, which are substituted for land area or distance. So in this case, this is looking at the population um, in 2100, 20, okay? So we're in 2020, we're talking about 2100. <laughs> That's a, a ways from here, but um, they're thinking that the population would be this big, 11.2 billion people, right, by that time. And it's, as you see here, this map is kind of doing a projection. It's actually predicting what the population would be and using visual information to show that places like India and certain places in Africa, I think this probably would be Nigeria, and certain areas are larger and have what would have a bigger population than certain places like the United States or um or uh, Chile or Argentina and so forth, right? Just something to keep in mind. So this is our actual projection. We could actually project things, right, using maps. So did you know that the first proper manuscript mapped appeared in the 12th century? And that map is now worth $829,000. That is an expensive map. I mean, if you could get your hands on it, then you'd be, you'd be rich. I'm just saying. Okay. And did you know that jigsaw puzzles were invented in the late 18th century and they were used in geography classes such as this one? They were actually maps and students would have to place the puzzles together to create a map. Ain't that interesting? So maybe something we, we may think about, right? So this is it for this particular part, this first part. The next part, we're going to talk more about how do we assess maps and how do we use all of this information uh, to, to gather data and gather information and actually how is information gathered, right? So tune in to the next part and I'll see you really soon. Bye. Perfect.